Rack and Roll, Shadows of Centris. All right, so how's the game look? Amadi asks Shireen as they re-enter the office she works at. Great as always. Come on, you three need to see this. We finally worked in all the motion capture you guys did and set up the unlock conditions. Shireen explains to him, even as one of her bodies kisses Reggie and another two hug from the sides. She outright picks him up with her waifish looking bodies as her lower body carries the whole thing off with the strange combination slithering and stomping gait of Elydris. She leads Amadi and Koa through the office while cuddling Reggie closely, and then all three men find themselves in her little cubicle. They were here before, but it's always wild to see how the woman redefines the term multitasking with no less than four separate workstations she keeps it simultaneously. Her main focus is on detailing the three-dimensional images for the game characters and one of the four screens shows Amadi going through a combat form while wearing a sensor suit. All right, the game is nearly finished and the final compiling is just about done. You guys have two versions for each of your characters. Shireen explains as she sets activates and quickly blitzes through another computer console to show them. I can't help but notice that the other variants of us show us in basic training uniforms. Koa notes out loud with a chuckle. Hey, it says I don't have my illusion combos here. Amadi protests in a near laugh. Well, I'm sorry, but you three are too strong to be tested into the game properly. We had to take away your normal weapons for everything but super attacks and cutscene finishers. The only way we could get characters anywhere near close to what you're actually capable of was to make it so that the main version of the character is not tournament approved and a weaker version that can be used in competitive play. Pity, Reggie remarks. Oh, don't you start too. Competitive play is a huge market for our games. If your admiral really wants you boys in the game, then we need versions that aren't as scary as you guys are in reality. You know it is fairly flattering that a fighting game can't handle the real us, Koa remarks and Reggie snorts. Koa, in the testing you picked up and used a dummy car as a bludgeon. I created a minigun out of scrap metal and Amadi straight up caused several system errors with his illusions. Of course they refuse to use the real US in a game. It's about showy martial arts and we're soldiers. There's a difference. Reggie counters as Amadi sneaks around Shireen to press at a keyboard and gets his hand swatted away before he can do anything. Oh, be patient, will you? Now one of our alpha testers managed to unlock all three of your characters once we told them what combat stages they were on. Care to see the replay? Shireen asks, and there's a universal agreement. It was a wonderful bit of human-friendly propaganda to have human characters in popular fighting games. To that end, Shireen had turned into an incredible asset. Yes, she was a junior in the development circles, but her work output was enough to give her a very favorable consideration from her bosses. Couple that with the fact that there was at least a good year before the release of the next title, and it was too good an opportunity to not volunteer the three of them to be characters in the next game. The playback begins and it shows a comedy character a young Apuk girl giggling and waving at the camera. Her opponent then shows up, a tall, well-built Panceros who unsheathes her claws with a snarl. The stage is in a public park and there's a series of trees behind them. All in all, a rather pretty scene. The game is clearly incomplete though, as instead of character names, it just says hash 32 and hash five over the health bars. There's a declaration of fight and they both rush each other. The player-controlled character, the Apuk girl, suddenly dodges back and avoids the swiping claws of the Ponceros before jolting back in between attacks to slam her with a running charge. The little girl character is outright giggling as she pummels and combos the larger character before ending in a grab that pauses for a moment. Then the right command is received and the larger Catwoman is sent hurtling into the stage to slam into one of the trees. It does good damage and shakes out a number of leaves, but nothing else happens as the Ponceros comes back. 
The pattern almost repeats itself, except instead of the apuk charging she keeps luring in the panceros to set her up for another combo before a stage attack into a tree. The second tree is a little different in that the first time some birds fly away, and the second time a nest falls out and the birds attack the character who was launched into the tree for a bit more damage and some flinches that interrupt further combo attempts. The third tree, on the other hand, has a very familiar figure fall part way out of the tree and offer a glare to the fighters before climbing back up. The Panceros is sent into the tree and sure enough Amadi nearly falls out again. This time he takes a few more seconds to climb back in. So that's the trick. The more times in one fight you combo someone off the right tree, the longer you have to hit it again and unlock the character, Reggie notes. Almost, Shireen says. You also have to beat the end boss scale character with the most aggressive logic tree we've built yet. Oh no, Amadi says, though his laughs as he gets comfortable. Bring it on. My body is ready. Koa smacks him in the back of the head as Reggie pinches the bridge of his nose and Shireen dissolves into helpless giggles. That's awful. You shouldn't say that. Shireen giggles out even as the Apu character combos the Panceros into the tree while the Amadi in game is trying to climb back up. There's a yelp followed by a roar of outrage before the entire stage suddenly shifts. It shows the Panceros getting the ever-loving hell beaten out of her in the background before Amadi's character charges the Apuk. He then vanishes before contact and then slams into the back of the character, dealing the same amount of damage that the tree would on to the player character. The incredibly aggressive NPC opens with a charging knee that catches the Apuk in the face before he initiates a grapple that has the smaller character one hand chokeslam into the ground twice before hurling her across the stage. The player character dodges back to avoid the knee they're expecting and coincidentally dodges the dodge behind an uppercut that was apparently being set up. She wastes no time taking advantage of the reprieve and starts up a combo that is suddenly interrupted by Amadi randomly failing to flinch and giving her a strong left hook that sets her into a combo. The player has enough health to endure the onslaught but was brought down low but also had filled up their special attack meter below. She then dodges around Amadi a few times and while he's committed to an attack and can't dodge, unleashes the special, which is a massive blast of blue fire with a green inner flame. It eats through Amadi's health bar and he's brought down into the danger zone. He starts up a special move of his own, but as the initial animation plays, the player dodges behind him. The stage in the direction Amadi's character is facing dissolves to suddenly resemble a grassy plain before a massive stampede of wildebeest, zebra, rhinos, and elephants charge through before being followed by a pride of lions. Then it all dissolves into a spider web pattern as Amadi's character laughs. I learned to spin my webs of illusion from Anansi. Then the boasting Amadi gets comboed hard by a character that, if real, would be maybe four and a half feet tall. He ignores a flinch, and the player is clearly an old hand at these games as she instantly dodges behind him and just starts to combo again. Your play tester would be a nightmare to face in a tournament, Koa notes. Of course she would. She got her job after winning a sponsored tournament two years ago. Shireen answers just before Amadi's character is knocked out. She's also made videos where she beats previous versions of the game with a blindfold on. The things people dedicate themselves to. Reggie notes as the winner is declared and it shows a screen that says, Insert Unlock Movie here. It then quickly goes back to the main menu. She then quickly selects the Apuk character again, sets the opponent on the Ponceros, puts it in training mode and goes for another stage. Its number is 14 and the scene is on a centrist walkway near the edge of a spire that shows a huge amount of traffic in the background. All right. Now after that, she immediately went to the next stage. Again, she doesn't know how to unlock the character, so she's going to have to experiment a little. 
It's one of us driving a car, isn't it? You bounce the enemy fighter off the right one and it takes them out while pissing US off, Amadi asks with a grin. Yes, but in this case, it's my Reggie. Shireen gushes and things start off as they did last time the Apuk is baiting the very simple NPC into multiple positions to send her hurling at the damaging things in the back. She actually misses of the first attempt as the Panceros is sent hurtling between the vehicles and a taxi, then drops her off at the starting position without any damage. The second time, however, she slams hard into an air van that then careens into the screen and there's a massive shake of the game camera and a blast of smoke. My car! Reggie's voice rings out, followed by a low growl. The smoke clears and Reggie's character is already charging the Apuk before suddenly stopping and hurling a piece of shrapnel at her. He then holds his hand out to the car and gets another one before parrying one of her attacks and slamming her hard for a counter that sends the player character bouncing. So, how do these characters work? I have played a game or two like this and each fighter generally has something they're really good at. What about our characters? Koa asks. Well, yours is the most straightforward. Very hard attacks and longer reach than most characters. Couple that with the resistance all three of you have to flinching and it's just an unending assault. You saw Amadi. He tries to set up fast combos into nasty grab attacks. Reggie here, however, has a gimmick mechanic where he picks up different bits of scrap and metal and he then uses them. But if he uses them partway through a combo, he uses it differently. Just using it normally has him throw it for a ranged attack and the scrap attacks are his strongest ones. And how does my character get his scrap? Reggie asks. As he watches the video game, Reggie grab another chunk of metal from seemingly nowhere. It's on a two second timer. The scrap is used with the special command and hits like a meteor strike. Shireen explains as Reggie's character suddenly has the scrap shift to wrap around his fist, and suddenly he takes a huge chunk out of the player's health bar with a brutal flurry that has a distinct metallic ring to it. Unfortunately, that tops off her special, and she manages to catch him with it. Once more, it eats the health bar and charges up Reggie's. His own involves dozens of chunks of scrap being ripped out of the environment, and they combine into a minigun that he fires off with brutal effect and a furious snarl. But the player is no one's fool and clearly knows how to get the hell out of a special attack, meaning that it's just a really showy display of a minigun's fire rate and leaves him open to be easily comboed hard, then he ignores a flinch and the now low HP fight starts once again. Unfortunately for Reggie's character, the player is very good at these games and quickly pulls him apart. I suppose no longer seeing myself abusing a teenager is a strange sort of consolation prize. Reggie remarks as the game goes again to the empty space for the character introduction movie and back to the main menu. Once more, it's the Apuk and the Panceros. Training mode and stage select goes to 31. This time it's a public venue with a lot of people watching. Far in the background are several food stands and Koa can already be seen wandering from one to the next as if unable to decide on what snack he wants. The player clearly spots this and in less than 10 seconds the Panceros is sent careening into the stand that Koa's avatar is at. He takes a step back in surprise and then just goes to another. So that's the game? The player is a stubborn sort, though, and after four more bounces, all of the snack vendors are destroyed, and Koa is outright strangling the Panceros. He then hurls the body right at the player who dodges before he slams down from above for the fight to begin. The Koa character charges in and slams the Apuk with a shocking display of range before unleashing a combo that makes big use of elbows and knees for bigger damage. The special bar is filled up faster than ever before and it's unleashed in a hurry. It's so fast that Koa doesn't get more than three quarters of his own special gauge as the Apuk takes advantage of the opening and makes big use of dodges to stay the hell out of harm's way. Yay, 
The main combo starts with a longer reach low damage attack before closing for shorter range and stronger attacks while the character flinches. Not very useful against bosses, but an absolute killer against most playable characters. Shireen explains as the player seems to get a feel for Koa's range and combos before starting to go in for the attack. They have to abandon a few combos to avoid retaliation due to the flinching resistance but wears down the health bar while filling the special bar. The special is different from both Amadi's Illusion of Africa and Reggie's minigun. He swells power around a fist to the point the axiom distorts and then uppercuts. The attack misses so whatever else is in the animation does not go off. But it's also over faster with the miss, so the player has a harder time capitalizing on it. But she pulls the win off eventually, and soon enough they're back at the main menu after a quick stop at the play movie, here bit. So, what do you boys think? Shireen asks. I think I'd have done more than an uppercut, Koa notes. If it had connected you, then give them a brutal mid-air combo. But since it failed, your character has the fastest recovery time of all specials. Shireen explains. I think that when this comes out, we're going to get no end of shit from the guys on the ship. At least a montage of every character spanking us like naughty kids, Amadi says as he fights down some laughter at the thought. You did very well. I must admit the scrap mechanic is interesting and I'll need to increase some of my Axiom training to keep up with what my video game self can do. You're already able to do it. The fight just makes it easy. I've seen you work. Shireen reminds him and he shrugs. Hey now, don't take away a man's excuse to work out and improve. We need all of them, Koa says kindly.